Coming up, we got fuel. Oh, we have news. And now the big news. Remember this door? And I stand on the toolbox. I did buy two more cars. Welcome back to the episode where we're going to do a bit of everything. We'll do some work on Project Castellon, E21-323i. I'll give you updates on all projects. And then we have some news. This is a 1980 E21 323i that's been off the road for the past 26 years. Over the course of the last two episodes of this project, we faced varnished fuel tanks, serviced the fuel system, and fought with the K-Dretronic mechanical fuel injection. Also replaced the timing belt, found disgusting stuff in the cooling system, then there was a fireball followed by some lady screaming in the background. <laughs> After servicing the brakes, the clutch system, flushing the engine, adjusting the valve clearance, we ended up with a running and driving vehicle and engine that has good compression results. This thing sounds very healthy and runs remarkably well considering what it's been through. The last remaining issue is the long crank before it starts when the engine is cold. So that's what we need to figure out now. I'm troubleshooting the long cranking issue when the car is cold, it takes a while for it to start. And I remove the seventh injector that's located underneath the intake manifold. And that sprays more fuel into the intake when the car is cold to help it with the cold start. It's controlled by this temperature switch here, which I already replaced, so we know that's good. And now I'm gonna crank the car a couple of times and see if it's spraying fuel. All right, let's see. No, not spraying fuel at all. Not good. So I just cracked open the line there and we do have fuel coming out of it. Oh, yeah, I'd say we definitely have nice fuel pressure there. Okay, so here's the dealy on the deal. I'm not so sure if this injector is indeed bad. When I apply 12 volts on it, it's activating. What I do know is when I check for voltage at the connector that plugs into the injector, we're not getting any voltage whatsoever. It should have, I think, around 12 volts and when I crank the car, there's nothing. So I think we might have an electrical issue. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna apply 12 volts to the injector directly, crank the car, which is going to build up the pressure in the line. And if it's spraying fuel, then we know that this thing is good and we for sure have some electrical issues. Crank the car a couple of times. No, that injector is bad. Clogged and or bad. Now it should definitely spray some fuel because there's strong fuel pressure here, 12 volts applied. Oh, actually look at that. Look at that. It's clogged. Look how much crap came out of it. So definitely clogged. So let's see if we can unclog it somehow. Tried a couple of things, but no dice. That thing is plugged solid. I ordered a brand new one from the dealer. Once that comes in, we're gonna continue troubleshooting. I think we might have some electrical issues as well. But once the new injector comes, then we'll continue testing this further. My troubleshooting rampage is continuing and I have some interesting updates. I was reading through the repair manual for the fuel system on this car and I found something interesting regarding this baffle plate in the air venturi. If we come to step number 12, it describes how the baffle plate should be sitting flush with the tapered section of the air venturi. Like this one is here, it's perfectly flush with the beginning. But that's not my unit, this here is my unit that I just removed from the car. And this baffle plate was actually sitting higher than that, it was not flush. And then if we come back to the repair manual, step number 14, if the baffle plate is allowed to be too high, the engine will run on. If cold, poor starting will be the result, which is exactly what we have. Then the repair manual describes how I should remove and try to bend the spring on the back and that way lower the baffle plate. Tried that, didn't really work. But this here is a used unit that I bought from some guy. He said it's in good working order. It's not, the piston in the fuel distributor is stuck, but I don't need that. This section here is in good working order and that baffle plate is flush over there. So I'm gonna use this here, that one I'm going to remove. And it's pretty clear that someone was messing around with this as well when they were servicing or trying to get the car running, because that's not original BMW bolt. So I have to pretty much double check everything on this car and make sure it's good. And well, that's not. So that's certainly adding to the cold start issue that we're having, and now we can cross another thing from our list. So brand new intake boot, fuel line, and cold start injector. 
This has been discontinued. You cannot buy it brand new from the dealer anymore. I got really lucky and I found this on eBay, new old stock from some seller. I think it was the last item, 142 euros. Now we're gonna install it and see if it actually works. Okay, install the line first. Okay, let's give it a twist. New injector. All right, now I'm gonna turn the key and see if the thing actually works now or we have some electrical issues remaining. Nine, does not work. Bastard. We have electrical issues. That thing is not getting any power. Why are you not getting any power, bro? So I just finished checking all the wiring and it appears that everything is okay. And then I turned my attention back to the cold start injector, apply 12 volts to it, and wouldn't you know it, it doesn't work. So my new old stock injector is kaput. So I ordered a third one from eBay, this time a used one. Again, the seller claims it's working. So when it comes in, I'll, well, we'll see, I guess. But this is becoming increasingly annoying. So here is the third cold start injector. This one is physically damaged, which is brilliant. But the guy says it works. Probably gonna end up sending it back because he didn't say what kind of damage. Will it finally work? Nah, nada. So here's what we have with this injector. So I disconnected the plug because it's not firing with the plug, but if I apply 12 volts, it's working. The spray pattern is really poor, but it is working. Yeah, that injector is bad because it shouldn't be spraying like that. So I'm gonna send it back because the body of that injector is mangled. The guy didn't say he was that bad. So it's not getting power, that's for sure. All right, now I gotta go find wiring diagram for this thing. Update, I replaced the diode relay and the injector is finally getting power. That being said, the injector is bad. That is the third or fourth, I don't even remember which injector I tried and it's, it's bad. He it doesn't wanna spray at all. Well. Spray somewhat, it's dripping, but it's not spraying properly. So I have to scar eBay again and uh, see if I can find one that works. But thankfully we resolved the electrical issues. It was definitely the relay. That's that thing over there. You can see the part number. That was bad and it was not allowing power to come to the cold start injector. Get back to you once I find the fifth injector, I believe. Because yesterday a subscriber dropped off one that he had in storage, also not working. Say hello to yet another cold start injector. And I don't even remember which one this is, fifth or sixth. Let's see if this one works properly. Finally, finally, that's how it should work and spray. Perfect. Now we can assemble this thing finally and see how this thing starts. Let me show you that spray pattern again. Beautiful. Okay, I don't expect it to start perfectly from the first time because now I need to set the mixture, but let's just see how it starts. That was much, much better than before. Really happy about that. Now listen to that idle. Welcome back. For you, it's just a few seconds. For me, it's been five or six weeks since I last worked on this thing. And now it's time to find out how good of a cold start it has. I actually already know because I started a couple of times and it starts super nicely, but now you can hear it for yourself. It's been three weeks since I last started it. I was on vacation and it's quite cold now as well. One degree Celsius. That's 20 minus 30 minus 25 minus 174 Fahrenheit. So pretty cold. Ignore whatever that is. My landlord thought it was a good idea to put that there. What do you say about that? Just listen to it. This whole thing starts that good in cold weather. And this is without even fine tuning the mixture. Incredible, absolutely incredible. So we solved our issue with the cold start. It was the seventh injector. Lovely. Now we're gonna get it inside and then do more stuff on it. Ridiculous that it starts this good.
So now we're gonna do some work on the cooling system. If you remember the radiator, it's completely corroded inside and the thermostat housing, it was just eaten and falling apart. So we need to replace those two things before we take this thing on a dyno. Oh yeah, I was planning to take this car to a dyno in this episode, but the timing with the dyno shop didn't work out, unfortunately. So I gotta drain the coolant first, pop the low radiator hose. There we go. All things considering, it looks rather good. We did clean the crap out of this cooling system last time. Because remember, it looked disgusting. Now we need to remove these hoses here. Come on. Yeah, it's just full of rust. Hoses we're gonna do later, because this complete engine is gonna come out as well. I'll explain why later. But the whole point of taking this car to a dyno is so I can see whether this engine is actually healthy, if it's making the proper power. If it's not, then we know we need to rebuild it. And if it's making good power, then we're gonna leave it alone. Okay. The radiator can come out. We're also going to replace the fan blade. So you can see the previous bastard bitten it off. So we need to take care of that. Is. Ah, see, rental seal is holding that really tightly on. Thank you very much. Ow! No! I'm never gonna find that again. You are coming out. Perfect. Oh, I can see the nut. Ooh. Very nice. Here's everything on the table. You can see that the old radiator is just full of rust inside and completely gone. Here's the new one, new fan blade, thermostat housing, and this is the old one. And part of this pipe is missing here. It's all sorts of disgusting on the inside. This is eaten off as well. So I'm actually quite surprised this didn't leak. And this is the beautiful new one. Look at that engraved logo quite like that. Expensive, but necessary. So we do need to transfer that and that to there. Fan blade in. All right, that's everything reconnected. Now we cannot cool it. You can see bubbles coming out on the blue screw, on the thermostat housing. Let's hear that cold start again. It starts so good. And as I said, it's not even tuned all the way. That's coolant burning off. All right, so I'm gonna let it warm up, verify that there are no leaks. All right, no coolant leaks, which is great. Although it's still running slightly hotter, same as before, the gauge goes a bit above the middle. And I'm not sure if that's a sign of a problem because it could be that we still have some cloud coolant passages and at the very least we'll need to do the head gasket. But at the same time, I can't drive this car. It's only idling in the yard. Maybe it doesn't like to idle like that. I did look up to buy a fan shroud here and the 323i never came with one, so I can't get it. Either way, it's not overheating, which is the important bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and book the dyno. The owner of the shop, he's supposedly a specialist in tuning these old cars, especially the old Bosch k So I'm kind of curious to see what it can do because this engine still needs some fine tuning. And then we'll see what kind of power this thing is going to make. All right, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Unfortunately, the dyno session for this car is not gonna take place in this episode. The guy doesn't have time and the earliest appointment that he can give me is in about two weeks and that just doesn't work for this video. So we are going to take it to a dyno at one point, just not now. We did solve one big issue, the cold start issue, which is great. We serviced the cooling system, although I still need to look further into that because the gauge keeps doing this. So I'm not sure if there's actually an issue with the cooling system or the gauge is just messing around. I mean, it's not overheating, but it does go slightly above the middle and that's kind of annoying, so we'll see. And with that, this project is going to hit the back burner. Reason being, well, there are actually two reasons. 
Number one, the next step is a rather big one. And two, I want to finish projects that I got before this one first. For example, Project Marseille E31850i. That's also a big long-term project and I want to finish that car before I finish this one. And I'm going to tell you what the next step with the E21 is. If you followed other projects, then you know how things work around here. First, we always do mechanical stuff under the hood, underneath the car, then the interior and finally exterior. With this particular project, we're going to do things differently. The next step is the paint. And you're asking why, and here's why. The engine bay, it's not looking good. We have surface rust here, here. There's surface rust over there. There's black stuff over there as well. So everything in the engine bay needs to come out and that part of the car resprayed as well, along with the entire car. The paint is shot. It was already resprayed once. We have typical E21 rust in the corner of the windows, both sides, bit of rust here. And that's as far as the rust goes. The complete car is essentially rust free apart of those three spots. And that's why the next step is the big one. I need to take out everything in the interior, make sure that the floor is good. Underneath it is, but we got to check the inside of it as well. Strip all of the trims, windows, everything in the engine bay. So there's going to be parts everywhere. And now the timing is just not good with the Alpina engine being well in bits all over the shop. So that's why this project is going on the back burner. So that's that. And now we're going to do updates on all of the other projects. Project Rally, my 2007 E60 M5 with the glorious, magnificent, beautiful six-speed manual transmission. I adore this car. I love driving it and it's still working perfectly fine. But actually the next video is going to be on this project. We're going to do the shocks. The rear right one is leaking. So we're going to go with Bilstein B6 all around. We're also going to do throttle actuator service as part of preventive maintenance. Gonna do the valve covers at the same time and some other odds and ends like the mirror, it's not folding properly. But that's coming up in the next video. Project Cars Rue, 1989 or 88, E32 750IL, and it's time to do more work on this project. Once I'm done with E60 video, this is going to be the following one. We're going to do the top end refresh. I just ordered all of the parts that I needed to do that. So we're going to do the valve covers, banjo bolts, intake manifold gaskets, complete cooling system, valve stem seals, and in general, just make sure that this engine is working 100% before we proceed with the rest of the project. So that's coming up pretty soon. Project Chicago, the Alpina B7. Currently the most popular project on the channel. I mentioned this in the previous videos, but the engine is getting sleeved. I sent the block, the heads, the crank, the pistons to a specialist, to a machine shop, and he's going to sleeve the block, refurbish the heads, polish the crank and measure all of the pistons. I was told initially that it's going to take two weeks once he receives the parts. It's been seven weeks and every time I ask, it's next week, next week. And you know how that goes. The guy is very busy. He has a lot of work. I don't want to rush him and I don't care how long it takes as long as he's done 100% perfectly and properly. But as soon as that comes in, we're going to reassemble this engine. I have parts all over the shop and I just want to put all of that back together. If everything goes well with the engine, then we're going to proceed and do the suspension. Needs a bit of love in the interior and then we can take it to the German tooth inspection. That's it there. The crispy E32 750IL Highline. This is not a project, it just serves as a backup for Project Cars Rue, at least for now. The free E39 528i Touring Individual that was given to me by a lovely Patreon Timo. Since that video, I installed the original Hella headlights. I sold the cold start issue and I also decided I'm not going to keep it, unfortunately. There are just way too many projects around here, way too much stuff that needs to be done. And I simply don't have the time to work on this one and frankly, don't even have time to use it. And this is a usable car. And instead of it just sitting here and rotting, I decided that since it was given to me by one of my Patreons, to give it back to one of my Patreons. I'm not sure about the rules and details yet, but I'll post everything on my Patreon pretty soon. And if you want to join my Patreon, you can do so by following the link in the description. I would really appreciate that. But this car, it still has Valley Tooth MOT, so it can be registered and used. It's a good car to bring you from point A to point B. And ideally, it's going to go to someone who could use a daily driver, but at the same time, it's handy and can do all of the work on this car that it needs. For example, it needs complete suspension refresh. The interior needs a bit of love and the whole car in general needs a bit of love, but it's going to make a nice daily driver for someone. It would be best to keep it within European Union simply because this car doesn't have a lot of value. And when you take it outside EU, you have to pay import tax, duties, this and that. 
and I'm not sure if it would make sense. I mean, either way, if we have a lot of people that are interested in it, we're going to do a random giveaway, and I'm sure this car is going to go to a good home because it deserves so. It doesn't deserve to be parted out. Timo, thank you again very much, and uh, I'm sorry I couldn't, I couldn't restore this one completely. Project Cologne, my trusty E46 325i Touring. Nothing particularly interesting to report here. I use it as a daily in winter time. It's on winter tires. I just did a small service on it, oil and filter change, and that's about it. It's a very good, reliable car. I do need to remember to order this emblem because recently it left the chat. Project Marbay, the E30 320i. Project that I finished and then expertly proceeded and unfinished it. As you see, I decorated the front end, but you already know that because you watched the last episode. I want to give you a big thank you to all of you for incredible support that I got there. I was just overwhelmed and uh, I really didn't know what to expect here because this has given me a lot of sleepless nights. But it's back, it's alive. It's mainly metal damage. This was rather slow, as I said, but the whole front end of the E30 is made of cookies, so it just crumbled. And end of this week, it's going to Poland to get fixed. I got all of the parts needed to fix it. This in particular was very difficult to find and I have more parts coming and it's going to a subscriber shop. They're going to fix this car. And the goal is for all of this to be repaired as if nothing ever happened. So all of the gaps and stuff, everything needs to line up and uh, I trust they're gonna do good work. Once it comes back, we'll do the final touches and then have the proper finale of this project. Michel is still gonna come and drive his baby come springtime. Project Marseille, 1991 E31 850i with the glorious six-speed manual. I didn't do any work on this car since the last video. I'm mainly waiting on the two-post lift to come in and then we can take the engine out and start with the M70 B54 build. Speaking of which, I have the donor engine for it right over there. Say hello to a donor 12-cylinder motor. The engine that's in the car right now, that's the M70 5-liter V12 engine. And this over here, that's the M73 5.4-liter engine. It came out of E38 750, but not just any 750. This year, gentlemen and ladies, came out of E38 750HIL, hydrogen-powered V12 engine that BMW made back in 2000, 2001. They made around 15 of these cars and they were running around all over the world, Dubai, Tokyo, Los Angeles, Berlin, and so on. And this came straight from the factory, and this is what's called Schrott in Germany, well, junk. So at the end of each project, BMW wholesales all of this as junk, and the guy that bought it from, he bought it back in 2004, 2005, something like that. And they told him that this engine has 5,000 kilometers. And it is extremely clean on the inside, like squeaky clean. Looks very, very good. I got a pretty good deal on it, 750 euros. And uh, we're gonna do a compression test, leak down test on this engine. Make sure that the bottom end is good because that's what we need here. The bottom end, and then we're gonna use the heads from this car. And then different cams, Voke chips, possibly different headers. And then we're gonna up the power from 300 horsepower to 375. But this is quite interesting. As you can see, there are wires here. There's stuff on the intake manifold. This is where the hydrogen went in. So I'm kind of looking forward to taking this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. So that's going to be a separate video. And at that, a very interesting one. Project Hovde, 2001 E39 M5. Project that's been on the back burner, but we're gonna be back working on it as soon as I finish reassembling Alpina B7 engine. We gotta do timing chain guides on this car, so that's the next big project. And I want this car to be done completely by July of this year. Why? That's because there's going to be the biggest E39 M5 meet ever at Munich in July at BMW Classic for 50 years of M GmbH. So I have my other E39 M5 that's in winter hibernation, so I wanna take that, I wanna take this, and have as many as possible E39 M5s at one place. It's just gonna be a fabulous event, and if you have an E39 M5, you're more than welcome to join. As you all know, E39 M5, it's my favorite car, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. I believe that's all of the projects. I didn't miss anything, did I? Nope. I did buy two more cars, but I'm not gonna show them yet. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know what one of them is. Spoiler alert, it's 
this car in different color and it has a small dent on this side but nothing a little PDR can fix. And then the other one where no one knows what it is. I'm going to show you that at one point. Not now because we need to finish some of the projects and then we're going to start new ones. And now the big news. Remember this door? Behind this door was a tiny garage where this channel started. And then in June last year, I moved. When I say moved, I did this to the two doors over there. And now, well, I've taken over my old garage as well. Et voila! This is now mine as well. And when I say mine, I'm renting this space too. So let me give you a walk around, show you how everything looks like, what's been done and what else remains to be done. Exciting stuff! We're gonna enter through here because you're already familiar with this space. The only thing that changed is that rack that used to separate these two rooms. I pushed it all the way to the wall. So now it's big open space. Other than that, I installed strong lights, four of them, and the fifth one is gonna go right over there. That there, that's the charging station, all the electricity, the batteries and the crap. And I did talk to Benpack, the two post lift, it's gonna come and it's gonna go right over there. Then that lift is gonna go here and the blue one is gonna go behind the wall. And this wall, it's gonna stay there at least for now because I can store finished cars, parts and whatever behind it and it's out of dust, out of sight. And this is now big, lovely open space. My aqua blast cabinet, my new compressor is right over there. And that rack, that was actually a ton of work because I had to remove all of the parts, remove the boards because they're quite heavy, then push the rack, then put the boards back and start reorganizing all of the parts. But this is what I'm talking about, Alpina B7 engine parts everywhere here in that first row over there. So that's why I want to reassemble that engine and just clean up all of this. That's my old room. The wall used to go here and now well, there isn't one that needs to be cleaned up by my landlords. I need to clean up these shelves. And this was the big project that I had this past week. Three phase electricity for the aqua blast cabinet and the compressor. It took me three days because I had to run all of the cables and pipes from the first building. Then an electrician had to come out and do all of this, button it up, hook it up. And this was cheap, except it wasn't. It's electricity. Of course, it was expensive. The last part, I still need to run more electricity from here down there for the tire machines, wheel balancer and tire changing machine and my little compressor that's going to support that machine over there. That's going to stay in the corner. And in general, I just need to clean up everything. That there is my new compressor and it's 150 liters. It has eight engines and it's quite a strong one because this aqua blast cabinet needs a strong compressor. And this is the quiet one. So that's all eight engines running. It's loud, but it's not stupid loud. This is the main reason why I wanted one of these, because normally those big compressors, they're just crazy loud, and I didn't want that much racket in the shop. Nine hundred euros that compressor. I still didn't try it, but hopefully it's going to be good enough for this machine. I can't wait to start using this thing more actively. We're going to do intake manifolds from Project Cars Ruin here. They're going to look glorious. The big, big issue that I have is heating. As in, I don't have any. I only have that pathetic little thing over there and gas heating that's trying to kill me with carbon monoxide. Doesn't help. Just makes you feel a bit better. And I did look into getting those diesel heaters because they're quite popular. And the only one that I can get that's sufficient enough to heat up the space of this size are Canon diesel heaters. And one, they're smelly. And two, and the biggest issue with them, they are very loud. There's no way I can film and have that thing on at the same time. So that's out of the question. Gas heating, that's also out of equation because that's not safe for closed space. That only leaves us with electricity. And if I get anything bigger than that, then the electricity bill, it's going to go through the roof. And uh, I did put that stuff on the doors to isolate it a bit better, as well as the brushes on the bottom and sides of the doors, which does help. But I think eventually I'm going to have to go back to electricity. Maybe not this year, perhaps next one, because we don't have, we only have like three months left of winter here. And uh, for now, I just wear warm clothes, happy thoughts, and yeah, I'm still freezing. 
But I am very grateful for all of this. This is beautiful, big space. It's very close to my home, 10 minutes by car. The landlords are really cool. So I love it. I really do. That's as far as the workshop update goes. That'll be all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this little update. And we're going to be back with our regular programming of less talk and more work in the next one. So I'm going to go and get the ball rolling on D60 and I'll see you very soon. The rear right shock is leaking, so we're going to go with Bilstein B6. 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 What is B6? Six. B6.